Good morning, everyone. It's April 12th, 2019, and I'm Jenny Lyles, and this is Out of Your Mind. As you can see, today I'm using a very inexpensive puzzle that I am going to work on while I'm talking to you about the idea of consent and consent culture. Now, I am a person who sorts my piece first, so frankly, I may not get past that while I'm talking to you. Um, so it's going to take us a bit with this. The definition of consent culture I'm working with is a culture where asking versus assuming or guessing is normalized. This isn't about legal definitions of consent. So let's get that out of the way right now. I am talking about the definition of consent that you use out of courtesy, out of respect for others, out of desire to have healthy relationships with other people. It's also called ask culture. I hear that framing most often from the autism community because people with autism or autistic people, as they prefer to be called, uh, will often miss hints. Um, hint culture is very much a thing. It's more predominant in the South than it is the North, but you see it in families, you see it in communities, and you see it among individual people. So hint culture is where you assume that you know whether somebody is okay with you doing something or not. Whereas ask culture is a culture where you assume that unless somebody has given you permission, you don't have permission to do whatever the thing is. Now let's get that first important thing out of the way right now. And that thing is sexual consent. Again, we are talking about a cultural definition, not a legal definition. Um, the legal definition is separate and important, but it is not part of our discussion today. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are video gamers like I am, but I have played every version of The Sims since The Sims 1. And Electronic Arts has gotten consent culture largely very well in all the years of The Sims. In The Sims, when one Sims wants to have sex with another Sim, they walk up to them and they whisper in their ears. And if the other Sim says yes, both of the Sims jump up and down, look very excited, and race to the bed or the shower or the hot tub or the sauna or any of the other interesting places that Sims can have sex, which is referred to, of course, in the Sims world as woohoo, which I think goes back to the dating game and uh, the newlywed game and other fun things like that. So, in the Sims world, enthusiastic consent is the standard. This is, this person really wants to do this thing with me and therefore we're going to do it. Enthusiastic consent is a wonderful idea because you have no doubt when somebody is racing you to go do the thing, whether or not they want to do the thing, because the answer is pretty clearly yes. You're not going to get a lot of afterward regrets. You're not going to get a lot of problems with miscommunication. Now, in addition to sexual consent, there are lots of other places in life where we need to perhaps move toward a consent culture. One example is in every day with other adults and with children, we don't touch without explicit consent. This is where Joe Biden recently went wrong and why he's getting a lot of flack because Joe Biden is a very touchy-feely, huggy guy. And frankly, I'm going to tell you there is nothing wrong with that. However, Joe Biden has not always been 
good with two aspects of him touching people. One is that it doesn't appear like he always asks before he touches. The second is that he doesn't always pay attention to the power dynamics involved in touching other people. Joe Biden is a very powerful man. Before he was vice president of the United States, he was a senator for many years. And because of that, people tend to defer to him and want to please him. So he has to be extra super careful that people really want to have the kind of interactions that he enjoys, that he thinks are friendly, before he acts on those. Um, this is also true for parents and children. Uh, we often will tickle our child, for example, and assume they like it because they're smiling and laughing. But smiling and laughing are actually autonomic responses for being tickled, and they are not necessarily consent. Tickling can be extremely painful and or frightening for some people, and they hate it, and yet they are tickled against their consent on a fairly regular basis by people who find it amusing that they have this reaction. Incidentally, one of the reasons why I like doing puzzles in therapy is because it's a good way to learn that we make mistakes constantly and that is a part of life. And I think perhaps I put some of my edge pieces over there. We'll find out in a minute. But I'm going to put my edges together. Um, some other examples of everyday consent include touching people, uh, you know, hugging. This goes for school situations. This goes for home situations. This goes for situations where you know somebody well and situations where you don't know them as well. It's an always ask first is the default and always pay attention to how much power you have relative to the person you're asking for touch as a second piece of that because sometimes people say yes not because they want touch, but because they feel they have to say yes. And no, I am not very good at puzzles, why do you ask? Another thing is borrowing. Borrowing tools, I'm talking to you my darling love. Uh, borrowing clothes. Uh, taking food out of the fridge that somebody else prepared. Things like that, those are, again, consent-only activities. If somebody says, hey, um, there's a piece of cheesecake in the refrigerator and it's for you, then go ahead and have that piece of cheesecake. But if there's one piece of cheesecake left and you don't know who it belongs to, but it belongs to somebody else that you live with. Sorry, that's the second piece I dropped on the floor. Somebody else that you believe with, live with other than yourself, you don't know if they're consenting for you to eat that cheesecake or not unless you ask. So ask. Let's see. Maybe this one? Nope. Maybe over here? Nope. Sharing pictures. Um, you've taken a picture of a family member that's embarrassing. You need to ask consent before that goes out. You need to ask consent even if it's not an embarrassing per picture. Some people just don't like having their picture taken, and you need to respect that, again, in consent culture. Telling personal stories. I have kind of an interesting situation in my family. I have one son who is very outgoing and uh, has given me explicit ongoing permission to use storytelling about him in my therapy practice to help my clients. This is an incredibly generous position on his part. It was not necessary. It's one he gave me because that's part of his personal nature. So I tell stories about how hard he was to raise on a regular basis because 
he is a he was a very difficult child to raise because he is very strong-willed and he's very much a leader and that can be very difficult for parents my other son prefers that I don't tell stories about him and therefore I don't and that's all you need to know about him and I am very careful on these to try to respect other people's requests I work in the mental health field of course that limits how much I can talk about my clients uh, considerably on a legal level as well as on an ethical level again that's a little bit outside the scope but it kind of give you gives you an idea of the kind of boundaries we're setting another area where I want to talk about is mental health and consent a lot of people have mental health conditions that are eager, either aggravated by situations in which consent isn't sought as well or even caused by situations where consent wasn't caused the most obvious of these of course is PTSD if you have had trauma happen to you there's a good chance that the trauma occurred because somebody did not ask your consent to something and if that is the case you are not going to respond well to situations in which your consent is not sought or your situ or your consent is not clearly given so that is something to be very aware of I bet some of you right now are screaming that's where that piece goes no 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 you've got it wrong I'm sorry guys I am not the world's best puzzle putter together this is the best I've got deal I probably ought to be using the picture though because I am really struggling today and I'm still thinking I maybe didn't put all the pieces up here um, the other situation and I mentioned it briefly before is autism um, the nature of the autistic brain is that um, ask culture is almost a necessity now let me strike that ask culture is a necessity uh, people with autism autistic people do not handle hints well they often completely miss hints they don't understand them and they're not comfortable with hints and because of this most autistic people will tell you that they want to be asked specifically like would you like to go out this evening rather than hey I'm running to the store um, or talking about a favorite place or talking about a movie that's coming up hoping that the autistic person will ask um, autistic people can't pick up on that frequently it's part of the way their brain is wired and one of the pieces of consent culture is that we try to respect people's neuro differences the differences in the way their brains work those of us who have more ability to adapt will adapt to those who have less ability to adapt for instance another area of consent that I want to talk briefly about is the idea of implied consent and implied consent is a real thing um, this isn't so much hint culture as if you've agreed to something um, then there are other things implied by that like if you've accepted a job with an employer you have implied that you consent to follow the rules of that employer now implied consent always has limitations this there are no exceptions to this um, the limitations go to legal issues the limitations go to contractual issues let's say that your contract with your employer says you get paid X amount per hour with X minutes per day as a break and that if you work over 40 hours a week you get time and a half 
and you get your paycheck and your paycheck is saying that you worked 35 hours and therefore you uh, are getting paid for 35 hours when you know perfectly well and you documented it because you're a smart employee that you worked 45 hours and you should be getting significantly more money and I'm not going to do the math right now because that's not necessary but you get the idea so implied consent has has limitations you you have consented to work for this person you've consented to not uh, to not break their rules but they have also consented to pay for, pay you for your labor um, they've consented to follow um, regulations regarding your employment to pay you a certain amount to um, protect you from things like sexual harassment and racial bias these sorts of things and if the person you work for is not meeting their part of the implied consent then you have the right to seek redress through legal means or through administrative means um, implied consent also includes things like governmental ent entities if you are a citizen of a country the implied consent is that you are going to follow the laws even if you don't necessarily agree with the laws um, with uh, certain exceptions there is such a thing as civil disobedience and this is where you believe a law is unjust and you as an activist choose to fight to change that law and in the process of that you may break minor laws that don't hurt others in order to draw attention to the injustice in the law you're fighting again consent matters uh, some of the basics of consent culture is you ask you accept the answer you don't just ask and then when they say no you ask again that is not consent that is not part of ask culture in ask culture you are going to accept the answer and then you are going to manage your emotions about the answer you may not be happy with the answer you may really have wanted to do the thing with the person and this could be the sexual thing or the non-sexual thing but when they say no that's an absolute that is not an invitation to ask again um, again, this goes back to the power dynamics. Um, you more often see men asking repeatedly. Um, when women say no, you more often see uh, people of color having to say no repeatedly to white people. You more often see uh, children having to defend their boundaries against adults, these sorts of things. All right, I know I'm missing some pieces from the edges. Aha, found one. Ta-da! All right, ask, accept the answer, manage your emotions. That covers it pretty well. Now let's go back very quickly through consent culture. Uh, enthusiastic uh, consent is the standard that you're aiming for in all things this includes touch this includes sexual this includes borrowing and lending this includes sharing pictures this includes um, telling personal stories about others um, these are all areas of consent feel free to add areas of consent in the comments to this video or the podcast version or the article that you found this video in um, this is an everyday habit to get into and you know my opinion of habits if you've been following my videos um, it is beneficial to mental health for everyone to have a consent culture and that includes people who are used to not asking for consent and the way you deal with consent is you ask 
you accept the answer even if you don't like it, and you manage your emotions over the answer. We'll talk more about managing emotions in other videos, so keep following and you will learn more about that. Some announcements for this weekend. Uh, I am I am migrating my website that carries my videos and audio from outofmymind.responsivellc.com to oomm.live. And I will be doing that over the weekend, so the website may not be consistently available this weekend. Um, I haven't got an exact time frame because I have a lot of things to do this weekend, but there are several steps during which the site will be down. Um, I have an Out of My Mind Facebook group. You can find a link to it on my website, which of course will be down for about a day this weekend. Um, or you can use the Facebook search to search Out of My Mind and you will find a group that is led by Jennifer D. Lyles, LCSW. And it's also led by my, my business, Responsive LL, Mental Health Services, LLC. Um, my Patreon is at patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. And as always, my content is always available to patrons three days before it's available to the public. Um, right now, I've got a mixture of videos, audio, articles, and a little bit of microfiction, usually um, somewhere in the neighborhood of speculative fiction under 300 words. I very much appreciate the support I get from my patrons. Um, thank you very much, and I will see you again in a few days. This is me again. This is a little coda to what I did. I completely forgot to show my notes, which is something I have promised several of the people who watch my videos. They like seeing the notes. They like being able to read them. So I am showing my notes so that you can screen capture and read the notes. Also, if you prefer to read what I do, you can get it in the article that I generally post approximately three days after I record the video on the website, which will be after this weekend, www.oomm.live, L-I-V-E. Thank you.